Hey, this is uh, Razib Khan, Director of Scientific Content here at Insightome. And I'm Garrett Heinem, Director of Genomics at Insightome. And it's the weekly snippet. So this week we're going to talk about polygenic risk scores. And Haven't we talked about polygenic risk scores before? I don't know, have we? Okay, well, let's talk about it again. It's a big deal. We're going to talk about it again because it's a big deal, especially yeah. now with some amazing new studies coming out. A polygenic risk score is a test for a trait, behavioral appearance, or otherwise that expand that has sites across many many different genes we're kind of uh, have been triggered to talk about this by a new paper that just came out today as we're recording the snippet Great. gene discovery and polygenic prediction from genome-wide association study of educational attainment in 1.1 million yes individuals but the, the big result of the this study is that they can use genomics so genes you know in your genome to predict about like <clears throat> 11 to 13 percent of the variance in educational attainment which is just years of education mm -hmm. so um it's pretty cool because i mean we could honestly have never imagined this 10 years ago this is just no. showing what genomics can do with large sample sizes like yeah. a million individuals and also wide sequencing i mean 10 years ago you would you would not be able to capture this many sites across this many individuals exactly so when it comes to something like height or intelligence any other um, characteristics that's polygenic across many genes. The problem was before the genomic era, when you did genetics, you were focusing on one gene here, one gene there. Right. So if you think about millions and millions of variants in your genome, this was really impossible to really do any robust science. Yeah, back in the day they were called gene panels. We still have gene panels, but they tend to be in the order of like one or two to dozens of markers rather than the thousands that are in polygenic risk scores. Yeah, panels are really useful for things like, uh, you know, highly penetrant recessive diseases. So yes. basically diseases can have like a single gene that has a mutation. And so obviously that's super important. And that's how genetics developed to a great extent for decades, at least human genetics. Now we're moving on to complex traits. So height is another complex trait that has been um, analyzed and explored with this method. And, you know, people have developed polygenic risk scores to protect predict they can predict um your height or around where they think your height is going to be with what correlation like 0.7 something like that yeah and that's really high yeah for most genetic and so height height unlike the behavioral stuff um in modern western societies or developed societies there's not much environmental variation so mostly the the outcome is due to biological parameters now some of that is still you know, developmental noise and whatnot, but it's 80 to 90% heritable, which means 80 to 90% of the variation is due to variation in genes. So genomic predictions are gonna get really good on height, I suspect, um, or pretty good. For intelligence and like educational attainment and personality, it's not as heritable, so we'll see. All right. We'll see. There's a lot of environmental things that can affect how someone grows up and behaves. Mm -hmm. The more information you have, the better decisions you can make. I think that's, you know, why polygenic risk scores are useful because, you know, even if something like say like, I don't know, let's say type two diabetes, let's say you have a polygenic risk score for that. Um, if you like your sugar and your polygenic risk score is very, very low, maybe you, you know, and I'm not a doctor, not making a recommendation. I'm not saying you should get big gulps. But, um, but let's just say <laughs> that like your risk and your concern might, might not be heightened as much as someone with a very, very high um, polygenic risk score. For example, just judging from family history, I think my polygenic risk score would be quite high. Um, I do avoid um, sugar and uh, really refined carbs. Is that only because of diabetes? Um, not only, but it's definitely driven by. It's different by, yeah. Okay, yes, everyone wants to get shredded, but that's a separate <laughs> snippet. Well, it's interesting that even traits that we perceive as simple are affected by so many different sites. And that's a product of just how our biochemical pathways work is we develop any individual mutation in a very functional gene. Something it's complicated. Across many tissues, yeah, yeah, it gets really complicated. It gets, it's complicated. But we're just, we're trying to like get a handle on really complicated things. And yes, we're simplifying as geneticists. That's what geneticists do. Talk to any biochemist. They'll tell you all about that. We are in a um, courageous new world of yes. uh, massive sample sizes. And um, first we cast the net. Yeah. And then we break and it down. You, you know what's better than um, a million samples? You're about to say 10 million? No, billion samples. <laughs> okay, so um, I think uh, I think we're good. We're good there. Tune in next time for the snippet and uh, Gareth and Razib out.